Because Brenton is trying to crawl away like I'm a female Ted Bundy, this opens up his torso and makes it easier to pass. Hello, my name is Crystal. If you've watched more than one video, go ahead and subscribe. I welcome you to join our jiu-jitsu family. In today's Nogi Jiu-Jitsu Narrator Rolling, I will be rolling with Brenton, who is a very talented and technical player. Today's matchup is full of Nogi submissions and takedowns, perfect for anyone interested in training takedowns and submissions for both Nogi competitions and MMA fights. Brenton is going for a guillotine. To prevent yourself from getting guillotine, control the wrist. A very important technique in MMA is the technical stand-up from closed guard. This allows you to escape the bottom of closed guard where strikes can be devastating. Brenton posts on my shoulder to make space to get out of this bottom position. I know he's trying to get up, so I grab his ankles to prevent his rear leg from going in back of him. If you make their ankles and legs touch, this makes it easier to get them and keep them on the ground. Ankle control with C grips and downward force pins his feet to the ground. This limits the risk of getting kicked in the face. It's also a guard passing technique often used in gi by gripping gi material near the ankle. Because Brenton is trying to crawl away like I'm a female Ted Bundy, this opens up his torso and makes it easier to pass. From here, I have Brenton's far arm and he knows he's in danger of being gift wrapped, so he turns towards me. My maternal instincts kick him as I gently rock him in my arms. Just kidding. I rock him to free my bottom leg, and then I think, oh wait. What about I test that S mount that I've been working on? By underhooking the far arm, I'm able to eliminate the space needed for escape. Now, if you watched my last rolls, you'll know that I've been losing the arm bar to escapes. Upon breaking their grip, it's the same time they rip their arm out and switch their legs and escape. When I feel Brenton turning towards me, I know he's trying to switch his legs to rip his arm out as soon as I try to rip his hands apart. By placing a leg on the grip that's defending the arm bar by gripping his hands together and posting my far hand, I'm able to defend his escape and slide into a mount that's used for the mounted triangle. Crossing your feet allows you to set up a triangle from mount to create a mounted triangle, and even during the transition, if you happen to lose mount, you can still get a triangle from the bottom. From here, I decide not to go for a mounted triangle because it would place my knee in a similar compromised position of how it popped about a week ago, so I see how long I could sit on his chest and test this pre-triangle mount. Because your feet being crossed now in the bridge and roll, you're able to get a triangle during the transition. I get stacked, which makes it difficult to finish. In order to find a way to relieve the pressure, I look for a sweep. The triangle is not only a choke, but it's also an effective hold to attack arms. I see an arm within reach, and since it's straight, I go for a reverse armbar to get a tap. So this submission would technically be a reverse armbar from triangle. Brenton grabs my wrist with two hands, which prompts me to do the two-hand fist pull to escape. He uses this as a beautiful shot set up to get a double leg takedown. Now from the double leg, I push his head down to set up an omoplata, but he does a very smart thing and rotates in the opposite direction and passes my guard instead of landing in an omoplata. Well done. Now from the bottom of the side control, I get a single as he sprawls to defend the single leg. As I try to cut the angle to the other side, I look up to see if we're hitting the camera and get guillotined. I'm telling you, the seconds matter. Had I committed to making that angle, my head and neck would have been by his his right hip. Brenton's bicep and forearm close the blood flow to my brain and the world start to get a little smaller so I tap. Bravo Brenton, submission by way of a guillotine.
Now Breton is confident in his guillotine, and I am stubbornly confident that my defense is better than being guillotined a second time in a row. He snaps down as I control that choking arm and peek out. Breton rotates to maintain a front headlock position and regains the guillotine. I peek out again and stand. A defense to a guillotine not yet on is to double leg. So I double leg. He sprawls and I double leg again. Just because it doesn't work the first time, don't stop double legging. And this is the end of round number one, but don't worry, we have another round coming up for you. If you have not subscribed already and you have enjoyed what you've seen thus far, go ahead, I welcome you. Come join our family. We would love to have you. I get a front headlock and go for a front headlock throw, and his response is perfect. He gets to his knees and peeks out to go for my back. I am able to defend by getting an underhook and using the pommel position to do a hip throw motion from our knees to get him to his back. Breton tries to get a knee in to regain guard, however I hip switch and move up to ensure he cannot escape this judo side control Kesakatami position. Now once you're in judo side control, you can rotate to get into a north-south position and go for a north-south choke. However, the key is to get under his chin. Now with the frames that he has, I can put my feet forward in order to get a better position under his chin. However, I know he would bridge and roll me if I go into that position. So instead, I trap the arm and go for a walk around Kimura. Breton turns to his knees and I get knocked to my side, however, this puts us in a great position to finish using a backdoor armbar. Now, if you're in a backdoor armbar, they may roll to defend. In judo, a uh, jujigatami is the same position, and you typically grab their pant leg or ankle to cause the roll. In this case, he defends the backdoor armbar by rolling, so they can end up doing the work for you. From the backdoor armbar, you can get a rolling armbar. I'm able to get a tap from this arm lock. Submission is due to an armbar finish. This is beautiful. He goes for a Shindishin Ashigurami entry to X guard. Take a moment to see this beautiful head position. Perfect. He gets a classic X guard tripod sweep. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Everything was going so good. From here, he does not get his legs through my legs after the X-Guard tripod sweep, which would have landed him on top with me in the bottom in side control. Instead of leading with his legs to pass, he leads with his arm. And you should know by now, if you put an arm between the legs of a girl who does jiu-jitsu, that shit is going to get broken. He gets a double leg and I am able to get a reverse triangle. See his head and arm are trapped within the triangle. From here, I'm looking to Kimura, the loose arm, but I probably should have arm barred the arm trapped inside with his head inside the reverse triangle.
I move to get top position, he escapes side control. I go for an omoplata and he rolls to defend the omoplata. As I go for an armbar, I should have kept my leg on the near side, on the near side of his head. I try to get my top leg over to triangle, but he captures my leg and sits back to attack my leg. I defend the heel hook, ankle locks, and knee bars by putting my foot to the floor, but I did not clear his foot from my hip like I did while we were standing. He gets a tat, so there's a submission by an ankle lock finish. I move the camera away from two white belts rolling. He gets a double leg takedown. A double leg is perfect for no gi rolling in jujitsu, and it's also perfect for MMA. Now, he gets a double leg and goes for a guillotine. I get up and double leg him and then finish a takedown with an outside trip. Remember, if you try to double leg and get guillotined and the guillotine isn't on, keep on double legging. Now, I tap not because of the choke, but I know these two are most likely beating up my camera equipment. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> so I take a moment to reset it. I make sure to get a solid overhook in this pummel position and do a lateral drop takedown. This takedown is from wrestling and works great in nogi jujitsu and also MMA. Our friend Young Ryan, who is a college wrestler, got me with this one and after I had to learn it because this is an absolute stellar takedown. It's also great for MMA because it starts in this pummel position, which means that you're able to hide your face from getting hit while you're trying to do the takedown. I go for a walk around Kimura and end up keeping a close grip to his body and I'm able to continue the roll and get a leg over his head and finish with an arm bar. So here we have a submission by arm bar finish or arm lock. They both mean the same thing. From here he tries to grab a single leg and a great single leg defense is putting on a guillotine because if they keep a hold of your leg they are literally making the guillotine come on harder. In order to defend the guillotine he goes in to try to get an outside trip and because I sense him trying to go for an outside trip I do a basically a combination of a couple of different throws and end up finishing with a guillotine. This type of guillotine is mistakenly called a Marcello teen. It is actually a reverse gable grip guillotine with a high elbow. Um, when Marcello does a guillotine, his high elbow has his palm to the back of his other hand, and this guillotine is a palm to palm reverse gable grip. So you've got your basic gable grip right, right here. All you're going to do now is turn it down. Okay, so you got your gable grip if you're sitting here watching this. Open your hands, okay? Turn, they're lined up, and then down. And there you go. And then this is going to be the one we go up with, and then you're pushing this up into the neck. Okay, so again, instead of using any of this stuff here, gable, reverse gable. In self-defense, you need to create a safe distance in order to run. There are two safe places in a fight, too far and too close. Too far means too far to be hit. Too close meaning limit the distance required to create forceful strikes. If Ted Bundy is holding a crowbar, you either want to be hugging him or at least five feet away. If a good-looking stranger with nice hair and an injury asks for help, uh-uh. 
Not today, Satan. That lotion is staying right there in that basket. Can I help you with that? Thank you. This shit was too crazy, hey. You do nothing. I really all of you who have subscribed it's like a virtual hug because it does take time to make these videos and I enjoy making these videos for you and when somebody just subscribes it like you know it's it makes me feel good so thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed love you and what I will do is replay the role without any edits or with minimal edits that way it'll be easy for you to learn all of these moves because it can be a lot in the beginning um, and play some really good music and maybe answer a question or two but yeah so enjoy
shit was too crazy, ayy. You do not amaze me, ayy. I blew through from AC, ayy. Oh, how much is pace me, ayy. I don't fabricate it, ayy. Most think y'all be faking, ayy. I stay modest about it, ayy. She elaborated, ayy. This that great poop on the AV on the TED Talk, ayy. Watch my soul speak, you let the meds talk, ayy. If I kill a nigga, it won't be the alcohol, ayy. I'm the realest nigga after all, bitch. Be humble, uh, bitch. Sit down, uh, you so much for watching those that of you who have subscribed i really appreciate it it's like a virtual hug and until next time love you bye this that great poop on the av on the ted talk watch my soul speak you let the mess talk if i kill a nigga it won't